More than a million people have now signed a petition calling for a complete ban on the use of genetically modified crops in Europe. It comes after the bloc gave its approval in the summer to the limited growing of some crops. Now it's led to accusations the US, which is the world's major player in the industry, is putting unfair pressure on the EU. Well, uh, for more, we're now joined by William Engdahl, author of Seeds of Destruction, The Hidden Agenda of GMO, for his take on the latest events. Uh, uh, thanks for joining us. Now, what do you make of the EU's approval in the summer? Was it a result of US pressure? The, uh, since George W. Bush uh, went to the World Trade Organization in 2003, before the rubble had cleared in, in Baghdad even, and pressed a suit against the uh, European Union for blocking the licensing and approval of, of GMO crops. Uh, the U.S. government has made genetic manipulation, the spread of GMO seeds, patented seeds from Monsanto, Dow, DuPont, and, and others, a national security priority. It's tantamount to the export of uh, defense weapons for the Pentagon and for the U.S. budget. It's a national security export sector, agribusiness and especially patented seeds, GMO seeds from Monsanto and company. So the pressure on the European Union, I know from direct reports out of Brussels, I know from uh, intelligence networks, grassroots of farmers and uh, political people across Europe is enormous. There's corruption in the European Food Safety uh, Authority, the EFSA, where uh, Monsanto and other front organizations of the GMO lobby finance the, uh, the research work of scientists who are supposed to be neutral and independent and looking out for the food safety of, of the European population. So the pressure, yes, it's enormous. There's strong allegations there indeed. I mean, the U.S. has a virtual monopoly in GMCs. I mean, do you think the U.S. government is railroading its way into protected EU markets? Well, they're certainly trying to, and uh, they've done that to a large extent in Spain uh, for a number of years now, where the agribusiness interests have literally taken over the what used to be a, a delightfully uh, natural food culture in, in Spain and turned it into agribusiness, uh, synthetic, I call it fake foods, where you have bright red tomatoes delivered from Spain, southern Spain, into uh, German supermarkets and you bite into them and they uh, they taste like chemically altered water and not, not real uh, tomatoes. So this, uh, this is a massive, massive pressure on the EU for one reason, because the resistance in, in the European Union is one of the major resisting points to the proliferation of patented seeds worldwide. And the U.S. government, the U.S. government co-holds the patent with Monsanto on Terminator seed technology. And they refuse to, to stop research on Terminator technology. So imagine if the European Union has Monsanto seeds and Monsanto switches those seeds off unless uh, the European Union does politically what uh, Washington wants in a particular situation, a scenario, or China or any other country for that matter, Russia. Now, when it's it comes very, to our people uh, buying uh, uh, vegetables and the like in their supermarkets, and many Europeans are deeply against the use of modified seeds, but uh, do you think, on a wider sense, the issue has already been decided? Uh, no, I think it's not been decided. I, I think the resistance, the political resistance, even in Germany, where the, uh, the government of Angela Merkel would have loved to have uh, appeased Washington and, and approve uh, Monsanto uh, GMO 810 corn last year. Uh, it was an election year and they could not ram it through because the popular grassroots protest. You mentioned the million petitions. They're trying uh, blithely to ignore the fact that a million citizens across Europe petitioned against licensing of, of GMO crops in, in Brussels, but that's a reality and, and uh, it's very strong political message here in Europe. Much, uh, It's not forbidden to label food products uh, free from GMO or not free from GMO. In fact, it's required if it's more than 1% uh, to label it. In the U.S., it's forbidden by law to label a product as free from GMO or containing GMO. That we have to thank uh, Father Bush in 1992. Okay, so, we we'll have to uh, leave it there. I'm afraid we're out agenda. of time there, but uh, thanks very much indeed for your thoughts. William Engdahl, author of thank Seas you. of Destruction, The Hidden Agenda of GMO. Thank you. Thank you.